Hello, so my name is Jamie McCanch and I'm a motivational speaker. And my story started 10 years ago on January the 7th, 2014, when I went to sleep um, as I had done any other day. During my sleep, I'd had a massive seizure which ruptured my sensory nerves from the L2 down and I woke up incompletely paralyzed. Since then, I have broken world records, pioneered disability sports, pioneered disability adventure, and I've even managed to climb to base camp Everest. And to be honest with you, the story is not over yet. So my role here at Champions is Head of Inclusion and it's a very exciting role and it's very exciting to be a part of this organisation where I help companies just like you build a more inclusive and diverse workforce to help develop and build the culture around your organisation. And if you get all of those things right, you will literally become the leading force in your field. And I'm very excited to be in, in a position where I can help and support you to do so. So for someone that has overcome many different types of adversity, as well as paralysis, and also cancer treatment, as well as a suicide survivor, one of the things that all of those experiences have taught me is that it's okay to fail. It's okay to get it wrong. It's okay to not get it quite right, as long as you always get back up. And that's the lesson that I try to give other people that have got challenges, that have had to face different versions of adversity, is don't fear failure. Always, always, always get back up, because that is where you become the best version of yourself. So if I was to give any advice to someone that is taking on adversity or any form of challenge, I think that advice would be respect. Respect yourselves. Uh, I have a saying called muddy puddle days, uh, and those are the days where we trudge, where we struggle, and we're trying to get through the mud. But the truth of the matter is, if we keep going, we will get through it. Uh, it's just got to be done one step at a time. But the biggest thing is to respect yourself. Respect when you're having a good day and respect when you're having a bad day. And when you're having a bad day, those muddy puddle days, don't beat yourself up about it. Just take it one step at a time. In the darkest times, what I can honestly say kept me motivated is other people. I have faith. I'm not a religious man, but I have faith in others. I have faith in myself. I have faith in those around me. And when the chips are down, I turn to those people. I ask them for advice. I ask for their support. But the real trick is to be there when they need it. And that's the, the real value around people and having people around you. And that is definitely what's driven me in the darkest times, is those people that I can really rely on, the people that I have ultimate faith in, the people that will look after me and that I look after them when it's needed. As an individual, I am faced with lots of different stresses and lots of different pressures, not just in life, um, living with a disability, living with neurodiversity, um, and also living with my continual battle with mental health. But I think how I face those challenges is slowly. Um, I give myself space when I need it. I give myself time when I need it. Uh, I have a lot of self-respect and I've done a lot of work to get that self-respect, to really understand who I am. We expect people to understand us. We expect people to have empathy and sympathy um, for our situation, but then we don't respect and have empathy for ourselves. And I've often said, if we speak to other human beings the same way as we speak to our own internal dialogue, we would be incarcerated. And yet we accept it as being completely okay. I don't. So one of the things that I do and how I deal with a lot of that pressure and a lot of that stress is I take time out. I will sit down and have a decent conversation with myself. I'll talk to myself in a respectful way because if you don't speak to yourself with respect, how do you expect someone else to? So how do you deal with, with level, high levels of stress? Respect yourself. It is the most valuable gift you'll give yourself. So we're gonna talk about how to overcome failure and how, to, how businesses should see these. Now, did you know that failure is the greatest fear of all mankind? 
we fail, we fear failure more than anything else. And yet we shouldn't because everything that has been achieved, everything that's been succeeded in has happened through failure. I'm going to go back to Albert Einstein. Albert Einstein was once sent home from school with a letter from his teacher saying, get this boy a job because he will never make it in life. And he is now the pinnacle vision of academia. And yet he was illiterate. Isn't it funny to think that through failure, we can achieve so much. A business does not succeed through its successes. It succeeds through its lessons of failure. And let's be honest, I'm a suicide survivor. So if I was always successful in everything that I've achieved and I've achieved a lot in my life, well, truth is I wouldn't be here because I'd have successfully killed myself. So isn't it ironic to think that actually my greatest success has actually come from my greatest failings. And if you take that lesson into a business perspective, the same thing applies. We become the greatest succeeders because we learn from our greatest failings. So for businesses, one of the greatest challenges that they face when it comes to inclusion and diversity is making sure that it becomes sustainable within the organization. And I think the best way to do that is to get your team all singing off the same sheet, all looking at it from the same way, feeling invested. And that goes down to the core where you invest into your uh, organization, you invest into your team, you invest into your workforce. And if everyone feels motivated and inspired and valued, then it becomes a natural stitching within the build of that organization. And we talk about culture, I talk about culture a lot. And I think that, that how you create that a sustainable effect is by getting everybody pushing in the right direction and everyone invested in the right culture within your organization. So many organizations now are looking to invest in their culture of inclusion and diversity within their organization. And I think the, the top tip with that is to be create an open forum space where people can talk about it. So what a lot of organizations do is they'll go, right, we need inclusion and diversity. So they'll start employing out into the world to look for people to fill those spaces. The irony is out of the whole of the British population, for example, only 16% of the UK population is disabled. Out of that disabled criteria, only 6% of those people actually use a wheelchair, which is the pinnacle vision of what inclusion and diversity stands for. So the rest of the population is neurodiverse, mental well-being. There's loads of different things covering. So if you're looking to start that neurodiverse journey and inclusion journey, start looking within because you probably find that you've got representation within your organization already and utilize them. Make those people feel valued, put them in a position of responsibility and create a forum based around those people and then others will start looking up to them. And once that starts building, what you then get is your culture will start to develop from inside working out. You don't need to go outsource to get this right. Mm -hmm.